All right, so uh, most of some of you know I am a sports buff, so I decided to do the Boston Celtics as my company. Since they are entertainers, um, people do pay to go see them, and they're an organization, so consider it a company for each team, also in the NBA. The uh, Boston Celtics, a little brief history on them. They were established in uh, June 6, 1946. Uh, with the BAA, or the Basketball Association of America. The BAA decided to go with a 60-game schedule instead of um, an 82-game schedule as it is today. And then they also decided to do 48 minutes of gameplay instead of 40 at the college level. Their first owner was Walter Brown, and their first head coach was John Honey Russell. Their first home game was November 5, 1946. It, it was six months after they were established, and the game started an hour late because of Chuck Connors, who did a practice dunk, and he broke the backboard. It was the first broken backboard in NBA history. The BAA and the Celtics joined the National Basketball Association, or the NBA, before the 1949-1950 season. And on April 25, 1950, they drafted Charles Cooper, the first black player ever drafted by an NBA team. In 1954 to 55, they also became the first team to average 100 points per game. Um, the picture up here is Bill Russell, who was blocking the shot, 6'10 center. He was traded to the Celtics from the St. Louis Hawks at the time, who is now Atlanta Hawks. And Russell played his first NBA game on December 22nd, 1956. And he put up massive numbers in a short amount of time since he was only 26 games late when the season actually started. The other impressive thing about the Boston Celtics is that they did win 17 championships, which is the most in NBA history. They won eight in a row from 1959 to 1966. The first championship coming in 1957 and the last one coming in 2008. They do have some Hall of Famers, some famous ones actually. Um, Bill Russell, as we just talked about, and Pistol Pete Maravich, which actually surprised me. Um, he was known to be the one that actually changed the game. You never really saw any around the back passes or through the legs since until he came into the league. And then Bill Walton. Um, the only player to win the Sixth Man Award, the, M the NBA Finals MVP, and the regular season MVP award in one season. He was known for his shot blocking ability and rebounds. And in the picture up here, Larry Bird, as some of you know, he definitely was not a liked player. <laughs> yeah. He had a little attitude on him. But when he first signed, he signed for $650,000 a year as a rookie. And then Dominique Wilkins, also known as the human highlight reel, that boy could dunk. The job breakdowns in the Boston Celtics. We've got uh, managing partners up here. There's not actually one owner today, as there used to be. It's five. They pretty much, it's like a board, and they, uh, they have board meetings and talk about you know, what they need to do, and then they do it. The marketing, ticketing, ticket sales, and services. The ticket sales, they have a, a group of people that get together and basically decide how much the ticket prices are going to be for each game that season. And um, the finance administration, they have, I think it's like three or four accountants, like high major accountants. And then the medical staff, and some people actually believe that the medical staff for professional teams are actually better than hospitals. There was a, a hockey player that, that got cut, and if he didn't, if he didn't stay at the arena, he would have died. He lost like five pints of blood or something like that. It was crazy. The staff, um, I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name, but he's the, uh, he's the head guy. He's uh, basically the guy that goes in front of the media. Danny Ainge, the president of basketball operations. Um, my dad actually coached him in Oregon. Glenn Doc Rivers, he's an ex-professional basketball player. It's always nice to have an ex-professional basketball player as a head coach because he knows what to coach and when to coach it. Brian D. Dew, the head strength and conditioning coach. 
Um, they have a college scout. This guy actually came to NIC um, two years back, I want to say. Guy Mark Michel, our big man, uh, seven foot with an eight foot wingspan. He went to Indiana University. He couldn't play because he actually played professional over in France. So he couldn't play at Indiana University. Um, but he has worked out with the Boston Celtics, so they are taking a look at him. They have a head athletic trainer and physical therapist. They also have a team physician and a massage therapist, which would be kind of nice. You have your own personal massage therapist. Um, so basically, the money for most of these people, where it comes from, the ticket sales, the group of people, when a good team comes in, they, uh, um, like the Los Angeles Lakers when they play Kobe Bryant and all them, for nosebleed sections, $96. On the court, $4,600. That's for one ticket. If a bad team comes in, say the Utah Jazz, goes down to $43 for nosebleed sections and $960 for on the court. So if you add in concessions, which is like, what, like $5 a hot dog, and like three bucks a small drink, and you say 5,000 people come to, come to the game, 4,000 get concessions and, and drinks and stuff like that, quite a bit of money. So the employees, they employ Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, Rajon Rondo, Ray Allen, Glenn Davis, and Carlos Arroyo. The first five, a lot of people know about because these are these guys are like the workhorses of the team. This guy is the 12th man. I put him in there because he is the lowest paid player on the team. How much do you think he makes this year? Does anybody know? 196,000 this year alone. Glenn Davis for three million. Ray Allen for 10 million, Rajon Rondo a little over 10, Paul Pierce over 15, and Kevin Garnett for 21 million dollars this year alone. So they got to make a lot of money through those tickets. <laughs> and I think I'm just going to leave you guys with this closing thought. The reason why the Hall of Famers are good is because they have something abnormal about them. Not necessarily abnormal, but it's a gift and. <laughs> In this video, you'll find out why Rajon Rondo is considered one of the better point guards in the NBA. Is there, do we have sound on this? Uh, no? Should be. Johnson recently called Rajon Rondo the best point guard in the NBA. But what exactly elevates Rondo's game and sets him apart? Rondo takes it away! Rondo has the quickness and agility of a classic point guard. But he actually has the reach more like a big man. According to Da Vinci's study of human proportions, Rondo's wingspan should be the same as his height, six feet one inch. But his wingspan is a ridiculous six feet nine inches. Those extra eight inches make his wingspan 11% longer than normal. And a big reason Rondo led the NBA this season in steals. Rondo takes it away. And at the end of those long arms are giant hands, nine and a half inches long and ten inches wide. That's more than two inches longer and three inches wider than the average male hand. In fact, Rondo's hands are actually larger than LeBron's. And amazingly, according to Da Vinci's calculations, Rondo's hands are proportionate to a man taller than Yao Mei. Those large hands help him control the ball, whether he's running the floor, grabbing rebounds, 
or dishing out assists. He is taking the game over. With the one man to beat, swoops back to Allen Freddie Jams. And the first on this play, the extra long lever formed by his arm and shoulder, nearly 34 inches long, allows him to whip the ball 180 degrees around his back in a five foot arc. Compared to the distance a football travels in an elite quarterback's throwing motion, the basketball travels a longer distance than the football in a shorter amount of time. Only 283 milliseconds. And defenders are left with a handful of air. The NBA championship could come down to who... So that's my presentation. All right.